many times had to sit through off so often and listen to homophobic sermons, uh, homophobic messages in the church while still sitting there and have to play behind them. Yeah, contributing to the process. And, and when you love doing what you do and you feel like you can't do it unless you hide, that it does something to you over mm, time. Mm. It really messes with you over time. Their goal in sharing their story to inspire others to be more themselves. Find community. Find one that will affirm you and love you and accept you. And not only that, celebrate you. <laughs> that is always my prayer, that people will recognize their inherent worth and to recognize that God didn't make a mistake. <laughs> You're perfect. That God created each of us just as we are. That God doesn't make mistakes. That when the world tells us that we are a mistake, that we're a misstep, that we've got it wrong, that God doesn't make mistakes, that there's a space for every single one of us in this church and in this world. We all have a purpose. Welcome back to another episode of Road to William. Now, before y'all be like, bro, you're in Cali. Why are you bundled, dundled up? That's because at the crib, it feel like Wisconsin. It's like I never left home. Freezing it is, by the way. It's hot as outside. When I go outside, I don't wear this. But don't tempt me. I will. <laughs> like, pass out if you want to, nigga. I love hoodies, okay? I love hoodies. I want to have my own line one day, my own brand. That's in the future. That's what I want. But I love hoodies. I love sweatshirts. Today's episode is dropping on a Sunday, a spiritual day. And to reflect before we start the week off. And um, I just wanted to be like, let's highlight some queer pastors that are out there on Sundays it's preaching a good word no hidden agenda the only agenda is to become better human beings to our mistakes our accountabilities in life to like bro <laughs> I don't know if you go to church or why you go but y'all know I grew up in the church and I've been wanting to find a, a church out here in Cali um there's one pastor I'm going to do, but I'm going to do him separately. Um, but he's a known pastor who, a queer pastor who has paved the way and stuff out here. And so that'll be a separate video. This is just, you know, highlighting a few pastors. Just a few. I just wanted to highlight a few pastors who preach in a good word, you know. Um, I think it's a sacred place, a vulnerable, uh, vulnerable place for people to to kind of like rest their souls, you know, re, re, revamp your souls. I think it's a, a sacred place to do that. It's a safe space. It should be, but let me know if y'all go to church and um, if you don't go to church, what is that sacred place for you? You know, what, where do you go to kind of like release your, stressors and you know what I mean y'all get it yeah like this one up there all right so first gay black woman pastor female pastor is in Minneapolis Minneapolis is in Minneapolis shout out to the people who live there I don't know not a soul I'm gonna tell you that and tonight let's look back a bit to see why something that is happening right now something different is so important Two years ago, First Covenant Church of Minneapolis was kicked out of the Evangelical Covenant Church denomination for being a place that allowed full participation in the church for gay people. And now, now that church without a denomination is going one step further. First Covenant was founded in 1874 in downtown Minneapolis by Swedish immigrants who built a faith around serving the poor and disenfranchised. Its origin story and its story of being removed from its larger organization found its way to this woman. So yeah, I am Gia Star Brown. Um, I am a pastor. 
a pastor who 24 months ago was struggling to anchor her calling to her truth. I came out two years ago. Um, I, I was serving as pastor and came out in a conservative congregation. I remember feeling the uh, wondering, is there a place for me in the church? She was wondering if there was a place for a gay pastor like her. At the same time, First Covenant was cast aside for affirming there should always be a place for a gay pastor or any gay person like her. And I remember feeling like our journeys were so aligned um, of, you know, having this, this stance of really feeling like we are called to love all people and feeling like this is where, this is the right side of justice and the right side of uh, Christianity um, is to be inclusive and welcoming of all. Feeling became the foundation of a partnership Pastor Gia came to First Covenant, and then in the last few months, something bigger happened. It's shocking, really. That's how she describes the moment when church leaders said, it's time to leave, Gia, and we want you. Are you sure about that? Because I don't know um, of any Black lesbian pastor uh, ever stepping into any role. Come Sunday, Pastor Gia Brown will be the first gay Black female senior pastor of First Covenant Church of Minneapolis. Two years almost to the day that church was told its love all position for people like her left it an orphan of its parent denomination. The overarching message sometimes get lost in the weed, gets lost in the weeds. The overarching message of love. What is the overarching message that you want to share as now the leader of this congregation? I think the overarching message is a message that I needed to hear and I still need to hear. Um, that God created each of us just as we are. That God doesn't make mistakes. That when the world tells us that we are a mistake, that we're a misstep, that we've got it wrong, that God doesn't make mistakes that there's a space for every single one of us in this church and in this world. We all have a purpose. Reverend Gia's official confirmation. Shout out to Reverend Gia. I'm gonna look into her and uh, Reverend Gia Star Brown, we gotta tap in with her. We gotta see what's good now. Next, moving on to the next pastor. Okay. <clears throat> this was about a month ago. As we celebrate Pride Month, Susan Elizabeth Littlefield shares the story of the Reverend Dr. Yolanda Denson Byers. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit. Yolanda Denson Byers is where she always knew she would be. You said you felt the calling. Yes, very clearly knew I would be a pastor. Explain what that's like in your soul. I just felt a lot of joy when I thought about my faith life and when I thought about what I was learning in church and the, the beloved community that I was a part of. And I knew I wanted to do that as my vocation. Her vocation now, it's head pastor, it's shepherd of the Hill Church, and he dine off. You're female, you're black. And you're queer, right? I mean, you can almost not be more marginalized, right? But she cannot be stopped. She has her master's of divinity degree from Harvard. She also has a wife and five children. I mean, even the denomination I grew up in, right? As a child, I was told I couldn't be a pastor as a woman. And I'm a part of this beautiful queer rainbow tribe of people and they don't understand the prodigal, expansive, welcome, radical welcome of God to all people. They don't understand that. And so um, they really truly believe that some are welcome, but not all are. And I wholesale reject that. <laughs> she says she wants everyone to follow their convictions and find community. Find one that will affirm you and love you and accept you. And not only that, celebrate you. <laughs> that is always my prayer, that people will recognize their inherent worth 
and to recognize that God didn't make a mistake. <laughs> You're perfect. And so in this month of celebration, she says she has faith that more people can be themselves. I feel like you should never do anything that discredits who you know yourself to be. Right. With photojournalist Joe Berglove, Susan Elizabeth Littlefelt of UCCO. Love her, Reverend Yolanda. Um, we got to check her out as well. Pride Month, we're featuring the faces of those who appear in this year's Portraits of Pride. Tonight, a pastor who is working to open the minds of the faithful by being himself. WBC's Brandon Truitt with the story at the intersection of religion and identity. On any given day, you'll find Pastor Brandon Thomas Crowley in his office under a picture of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But his real work is done here. To learn how to see your differences, what God wants you. Behind the pulpit of Myrtle Baptist Church in Newton, the 37-year-old has come a long way from his childhood in Rome, Georgia, but he knew from the beginning he wanted to preach. I've always been very enamored by the black church. I was raised in the black church. Uh, the deacons and leaders of my home churches were like superheroes to me. And I looked up to them. They were my Michael Jordans. But there's an added layer to this story. Crowley is gay and he says he always has been. When I would preach on the front porch, I would often do so in my grandmother's high heels. Crowley navigated a career of ministry cloaked in one of the most contentious cultural debates of our time, homosexuality at the intersection of religion. He ran into resistance from the beginning. I remember one time there were kids outside that were throwing rocks at me and laughing at me because I was on the front porch preaching with uh, a robe on with my grandmother's high heels and a stiff rag that she used for washing dishes. And I ran in the house and I was crying with my Bible and she looked at me and she turned me about face and she said, you go back out there and you continue preaching. His family affirming from the start, identities, be it sexual or religious, can be hard to balance for many in the LGBTQ community. It seems impossible for some. Crowley says it's not always been smooth sailing, but he's been confident he was not the problem. I have always known that I was queerfully and wonderfully made. The queering that I do in churches is not bringing churches into the world or bringing the world into churches. It's actually drawing churches closer to the original message of Christ, which is about love and acceptance. Crowley went to Morehouse Harvard Divinity School and finished with a doctorate from Boston University. He became pastor of the historic Myrtle Baptist Church in 2009. Years later, he would be guest preaching at another Boston church where he would meet Tyrone Sutton. Years later, they would marry. I'm proud of the work that, that he's been able to do, and I encourage him so much because it means so much for musicians like myself. Sutton is successful in his own right. The assistant principal at the Boston Arts Academy plays organ at a different church. The soundscapes in our home are me upstairs preparing for sermons and rehearsing my sermons and out loud. And I'm down on the piano just getting, you know, playing the tracks that I'm getting ready for Sunday morning. Sutton was raised in Alabama just an hour from where Crowley grew up in Georgia, and he knows the struggle of coming up gay in church. And we have many times had to sit through off so often and listen to homophobic sermons, uh, homophobic messages in the church while still sitting there and have to play behind the, yeah, contributing to the process. And, and when you love doing what you do and you feel like you can't do it unless you hide, that it does something to you over mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. It really messes with you over time. Their goal in sharing their story to inspire others to be more themselves. Crowley, with a lesson from his grandmother, he still carries with him today. She would say to me all the time, baby, don't ever allow people to make you think there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with them. What a little love, grace, and acceptance can do. In Newton, Brandon Truitt, WBZ News. There is such a power in authentically being yourself. He's so great, too, at spreading this message of love and, uh, boy, the energy he has. Just doing a great job. I'm through a lot. I wanted to watch this and then... It's an abomination. You'll go to hell. 66 stories, the same number of books in the Bible, Black LGBTQ Christians sharing their experiences within the Black church. I was never shamed. I was never... Not directly, you know, when those, you know, people, you know, they would give up, get up and give the, the homosexual speech every so often. It's part of Pride in the Pews, Can I Get a Witness Project. 
Founder Don Abrams says his organization's goal is to queer the black church one testimony at a time. We believed organizationally that the stories and voices and lived experiences of black LGBTQ plus Christians were important. The youngest person interviewed was 19 years old, the oldest 70. A lot of the folks that we had the privilege of connecting with had deep roots in their faith. They were praying. They were going to church. Digging deeper, the responses revealed challenges that Abram knows all too well. I was seen as the embodiment of a sort of antithesis of the theology that my church subscribed to. They didn't believe that you can be both queer and Christian at the same time. Many participants decided to share their stories to dispel that narrative. There are so many queer people who dedicate their entire lives to church ministry, um, but they have to, like, um, compartmentalize part of themselves. I'm thinking about the next generation of young children who are raised and reared in the rich and fabulous tradition of the Black church, and I want them to be able to show up as their full selves. Abram wants to use the interviews to help Black church leaders better understand and serve LGBTQ members. There are pastors and preachers in corners of our country who want to have the conversation, who are eager to have it, but they have to be presented the opportunity, and those of us who do the work have to meet them where they are. And when we do that, we will see progress. Keeping the faith that having this long overdue conversation can finally bring about change. Y'all, <clears throat> so that was the video for today. What do y'all think? I think the talk of the Black community um, finally accepting queer people is long overdue. It's always been queer people in the church, come on. Um, I have sat through sermons where I've heard a bishop say, we was at a visiting church, and um, I remember it was a hot day. It was all the off. It's already hot. I forgot what what state we were in. We might have been in Michigan. I'm not sure. So it was at one time we went to Detroit, and um, he had said, you know, don't come to me if y'all want to do that same-sex marriage. I'm not. But this was, this was before same-sex, though. But he was saying before then, like a few years before, it was like, don't come to me if you you know y'all want to get married i won't marry y'all i'm like wait where is this <laughs> how is this a sermon that's gonna help people i thought we were coming here to help so i don't know but people will you know try and use that as an opportunity to shame but that's that's not i don't believe that's not a christian to me that's not anything someone's attaching to be holy at all or pure or clean like that's to be like, oh, we get to condemn. It's like, you don't shut up. Anyway, this is that Sunday vid. Revamp your spirit. Some, some pastors, if you've been looking to get more into the religion aspect, or if you're trying to find a, a mentor to look to, like who to go to different pastors and all that. Because we've seen the pastors out there, and it's like, but do they speak? to me you know what i mean like, sure you could go to a black church but are they accepting of the queer community and how would that be about would you just outright say it i think so a church is supposed to be the hospital everybody gotta go even the pastor it's like a gym for your spirit i think you know what i mean people go to the gym to you know tone up or whatever they have goals when they go into a gym i think that's what church is supposed to be about we getting into the gym before our spirit you know to revamp our mind to give us strength to go back out there and fight y'all don't hear me they're like bro okay now you can go Kareem. now you can go now you can go i was that kid i would just sit through the sermons but some of them be a little born I ain't gonna lie yeah it didn't speak to me in that moment I wasn't I wasn't in that moment to accept that but as I got older and you can really preach you can really uh uplift somebody through a sermon and the seriousness of being a pastor 
you should be looked at as you're a leader, you know, you're connected. You've allowed yourself to be connected to God in a way where you're like, let, let God use me to uplift other people. That's a serious role. I ain't mean to get that deep on y'all. They like work, you know. <laughs> but just keep your head up. This is just a video to keep your head up, find some other people, you know, to, that might connect with you. I'm going to follow up, see, you know, what they're, they're about, how they uplift their people. I love that they're Black, queer people, speaking the good word. I've only been to one church where the pastor was, it was a gay pastor, Black gay pastor. And... um that was new for me, but I like that. I like that it's an option out there for you. But yeah, just open your options more. You know what I mean? If you've been needing something to just, maybe you feel stuck. Let's open some more doors, get us to where we need to get. But if you like this video, hit the like button, share this video. I'm on all the, I'm on Snapchat, I'm on IG, I'm on Facebook, I'm on TikTok. I'm on Thriller. I'm on <laughs> Triller. I'm on Triller. I I need to download them apps again. But I'm on everything. New music on the way. New interviews on the way. New movie reviews on the way. New show reviews on the way. I just got done rewatching Power. Now I think I'm about to rewatch um, Raising Canaan. Bel Air is on the way, so I got to rewatch Bel Air. Um, I think they're about to drop their new season soon. So I want to get re-caught up because I they've been going away so long. I need to recap. I'm sorry, I do. But I love Bel Air. And they got uh, the guy who played the butler. He going to be there on the new season. We'll, we'll call them G, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, basically. Yes, <laughs> my right Say why this my shit, man.